good. The number of participants seems to have converged. So um, good day, everybody, and welcome very much uh, to this uh, journal club, this very nice journal club of the physical review. And um, on behalf of Physical Review Fluids, I'm very happy to host this uh, session on a beautiful paper that was published uh, last January in, uh, in our journal. So my name is Jakob Snoeier um, from, from the University of Twente, and I'll be moderating uh, this session uh, on behalf of the journal, where I'm an associate editor. And um, the paper is about uh, everlasting bubbles. It will be presented by Miquel Baudouin from University of Lille, but let me also mention Emeric Roux and Alexis Duchesne as co-authors of this uh, beautiful work. And before I give the floor to uh, Miquel, let me just mention that please use uh, type your questions in the chat. And then after uh, Miquel's talk in 15 minutes, uh, we'll be, I'll be uh, passing these questions on during the discussion. Of course, you can also then join in and unmute. But for now, <clears> let's uh, give the floor to Miquel. <laughs> thanks a lot for the introduction and thanks to the editorial board for the uh, invitation. So yeah, it's it is great excellent. to attend this session. Um, so in this presentation, I will tell you the story of how together with my colleague uh, Emrico and Alexis Duchesne, um, we discovered the recipe of some bubbles that can last for over a year. So in the literature, it's well known that when you take some classical uh, 3D objects like a, a droplet or a bubble, and you cover these droplets or bubbles with uh, microparticles, so they are called partially wetting because they like to be at the interface between the liquid and the air, you can uh, have some uh, extraordinary pro properties that occur. So here, you have a, a droplet covered with this kind of microparticles. And it has been shown in 2001, then uh, these objects that are called liquid marbles can roll or even bounce over a surface so they don't stick over a surface. So here you have another type of object, a bubble, but this time in a liquid, surrounded by a liquid. And this kind of armored bubbles can uh, sustain non-spherical shape, as you can see on, on this picture and was first demonstrated by Subramanian and co-workers in 2005. And a very interesting property of this uh, type of bubble is that they do not dissolve uh, because uh, the curvature between uh, the liquid and the gas cancels and the, which uh, leads to dissolution arrest. So uh, um, a few years ago, uh, six years ago, uh, we asked ourselves, uh, what about soap bubble? Uh, is it possible to cover soap bubbles with microparticles? Um, <clears throat> what will be the lifetime of this kind of objects? But at this time, uh, we tried with a master's student to, to cover this kind of soap bubbles with microparticles, and we didn't succeed. But hopefully, uh, about uh, two years ago, when a new PhD student, uh, Emrico, joined the team, we challenged him to make this kind of um, soap bubbles covered with particles. And since he's a brilliant experimentalist, he found a way to uh, fabricate them. And here, with the, with the following very simple um, recipe. So here is how we obtain our bubble. So we simply take some water and, uh, and, um, and put, the, put the water in a um, container. And then we take some uh, micro uh, particles. Here, it's uh, just plastic beds uh, that are about 80 microns. And we spread them at the surface of uh, the, the liquid. And since the micro particles are um, partially wetting, they will remain at the surface of uh, the liquid bath. And so then we just inject a bubble below the liquid raft. So what you see here is really a bubble covered uh, whose upper surface is covered with particles. But of course, the, low, uh, the, um, the lowest surface is not covered with particles. So you have to cover it to obtain an independent bubble. And you can do it very simply by just uh, moving it on the particular raft. <clears throat> and with this very, very simple process, then you obtain a bubble covered with particle, and you can start playing with it. So we were very happy about these results, but when we updated our um, <clears throat> bibliography, we have seen that in the meanwhile, another team succeeded to uh, make this kind of bubbles, 
and even found a beautiful name for these objects uh, as they call them uh, gas marbles. And this team did a very good job and showed some amazing properties of this kind of uh, object. So bubbles covered with a, a film made of particles and liquids. And they show that uh, they can sustain a positive and negative pressure difference uh, between the inside and the outside of the bubble that are 10 times Laplace pressure. But um, I must say that these bubbles are a bit different from ours because um, the particles are uh, bigger compared to the radius of the uh, particle. Second, they are slightly hydrophobic while our particles are hydrophilic. And third, they use some surfactant while we don't have any surfactant in um, our uh, bubbles. And also, they, the, these authors didn't look at the lifetime of these objects. And this is something that we were very interested in at that time. So before delving into the lifetime of uh, this object, I will start uh, by talking about classic soap bubble bursting. When you take a classic soap bubble, why uh, does it burst very rapidly as every uh, children have seen uh, in their childhood? So there are three reasons for the, so for the bubble bursting. The first one is simply gravity induced drainage. So here you have a beautiful picture uh, of, a, of a soap bubble, and you can see some interference fringe here that indicates that the thickness of the film at the top of the bubble is not the same as at the bottom, and it's thinner at the top because of gravity-induced drainage. The liquid goes down and thickens the film at the bottom. And so the, the bubble because becomes very sensitive at the top of uh, the bubble, and which can lead to the bubble rupture, as you can see on this video that was uh, taken by uh, Adrien Bussonnière and, uh, and, uh, um, in the physical review later. So a second reason is evaporation. Of course, if you have evaporation, at some point, the uh, liquid film will become thinner. And so at some point, it can uh, rupture also. This is why bubble artists generally spread some uh, water in the air uh, before doing their uh, show. And finally, of course, when a bubble encounters a nuclei or um, a surface, it can trigger uh, the opening of the bubble, which can lead to uh, the bubble uh, rupture. So now, what about our uh, water gas marble? So here we have uh, the, the, the gas marbles that we fabricate with our uh, technique. Uh, we just added some uh, dye to better visualize the liquid. And here, what you will see is an accelerated movie of uh, the life of this kind of bubble. So you see that at the beginning, the bubble keeps its shape. And here, you, see, you just saw that the bubble opened up. And you, saw that, you see also that just after uh, the opening of the bubble, um, the color of the bubble changes. So we wanted to understand what was happening. And for that, we started to uh, record uh, the, the, the mass of this bubble as a function of time. So what we observe is a linear trend. It's really experimental point. Uh, it's not a, a fake, it's real. Um, we obtain this uh, linear curve and uh, after we have a plateau. And what we observe is here is when the bubble rupture and we see that the bubble opening opens shortly before it reaches the plateau, which means that all the liquid has evaporated. Um, so the reason for this bubble rupture is really evaporation. And we did many experiments with different ambient humidity and different thickness of the liquid film. And what we observe is that, of course, the more humidity you have and the thicker is your liquid film, the longer will be the lifetime of your uh, gas marble. So <clears throat> another proof that the bubble is dry is that uh, as, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, slightly uh, shortly after the rupture, you observe that the bubble um, up, should arrive. Yes, that the bubble collapses like a sump pile like that, indicating that there is no more liquid between uh, the particles. So <clears throat> what about drainage? Well. If you uh, considered um, uh, a water a bubble with a the water film only, you could use uh, the, um, the uh, formula given by uh, Pierre-Gilles Degen 
1998 to compute what will be the living time of a bubble made just of a thin film of water. And if you compute the drainage time, it's about 20 microseconds. So it's extremely short, which explains why you never observe uh, water only bubbles. So why you don't observe uh, this drainage here, uh, or at least it's slowed down? Because you turn this large liquid film into small capillary bridges. So here you have a beautiful picture taken, taken by Timune and Al that shows uh, the, the, the liquid between uh, the particles. And so you have turned your big liquid film into a small capillary bridge. And since the particles are partially wetting, they will attract the liquid. <clears throat> and this surface tension effect will be uh, larger than gravity effect at the small capillary bridge scale. So it will prevent uh, your uh, drainage or at least reduce the drainage. So now you see if you want to have some bubbles that stay for a long time, then you did also to counteract evaporation. And there were some nice work done by uh, young and co-workers uh, who uh, studied uh, bubbles, but this time at the uh, uh, top of a liquid bath. So it's what is called surface bubble. And they showed that uh, because of the capillary effects that I mentioned before, uh, because of the capillary bridge and the Laplace pressure, then the liquid is sucked up from the, uh, from the liquid bath to the top, uh, which compensates uh, the evaporation. But the problem is that uh, here you need a liquid bath to compensate for evaporation. And in our case, we have a free bubble, so we have no liquid uh, reservoir. So the solution that we found to counteract evaporation was to use a hygroscopic liquid, which is glycerol. So what is a hygroscopic liquid? It's just a liquid that tends to attract the water molecules that are contained um, in the ambient atmosphere. Um, <clears throat> why is glycerol uh, hygroscopic? Well, because um, you, uh, uh, glycerol is made of hydroxyl groups that tends to form some hydrogen bonds with water. And so it tends to attract uh, water uh, to the glycerol. So it's something that is very well known uh, because uh, experimentalists uh, know that if they leave glycerol for a long time outside, after some time, it's no more glycerol. It becomes a mixture of glycerol and water. And indeed, if uh, we add glycerol to water to fabricate our bubble, we observe the following behavior. So here again, it's uh, our gas marble mass as a function of time for different content of uh, glycerol. So for small content of glycerol, what we observe is what we observed before. The bubble mass decreases linearly, and then there is the rupture of the bubble. But above a certain threshold, what you observe is that uh, at the beginning, the bubble mass decreases or increases depending whether you have a lot of glycerol or a, a little amount of glycerol. But after some time, you reach a plateau that tells you that you reach an equilibrium uh, with the ambient atmosphere. Of, of course, you might have some fluctuation due to, so due to the fluctuation of the humidity in the ambient air. And with this recipe, we were indeed able to uh, have some bubbles that lived for more than uh, one year. And um, we were astonished. In fact, it happened uh, shortly before um, the, public, uh, the acceptance of the paper, so bubble rupture. And we think this is a possi possibility. We have no proof at the moment. But the possibility is that there were some development of light inside the bubble because uh, the, the bubble started to become a, bit, a little green that might uh, have changed the composition of the bubble. So <clears throat> to, to probe and verify that uh, these long lasting bubbles are still liquid, uh, we perform some more experiments where we take a needle and we uh, puncture uh, the top of the bubble. And you can see that it does not collapse like a sand pile because there is, uh, it's a mixed interface of liquid and uh, particles. So the next step, we wanted to understand and predict the uh, bubble evolution. So we developed a very, very simple model where we looked at the evolution of the mass of the bubble. And this evolution of the mass is an equilibrium between the flux of absorption due to the presence of glycerol 
and the evaporation of the water that is contained in the liquid film. So basically, the evaporation will be proportional to one minus the humidity. Uh, the more humidity you have, the less evaporation you will have. And uh, proportional to the uh, water content, which is one minus the glycerol mass uh, ratio. The absorption will be proportional to this time the humidity. The more humidity you have in air, the more akin you are to absorb uh, water. And proportional this time to the glycerol uh, contents that you have in your liquid film, because of course, the more glycerol you have, the more you will be uh, able to attract, uh, to absorb uh, water. So this is a very simple model, but in this model, you have two unknown parameters but that you can determine from, uh, from, uh, from experiments. So to determine the evaporation rate, then you can just look at pure water gas model, because in this case, you have no absorption. You just have evaporation. And uh, you can uh, try to find uh, coefficients that uh, enables to fit all the experimental data. And here is what we obtain with the simple uh, evaporation model when we take this value of the evaporation coefficient. So it's able to uh, pretty well recover. This is the straight lines here, all the data. So then you have to, uh, <clears throat> to determine also Ka. And in fact, you can determine, uh, determine the uh, ratio Ki e over Ki A uh, by looking at the equilibrium situation. As I said before, when you leave glycerol for a sufficient amount of time, uh, then you will end up with a mixture of glycerol and, and water that depends on the relative humidity. And you have lots of experiments in the literature uh, that measure this uh, uh, equilibrium mass ratio. So if we take, go back to our model, uh, when you are at equilibrium, you have uh, the evolution of mass that is equal to zero. So the absorption flux is equal to the evaporation flux. And if you do that, you obtain this formula. And you, you can just uh, try to fit this experimental data to obtain the better fit. And we obtain Ka over Ke equal to 0 0.248. And now you can come back to your water glycerol glass, gas marble and look whether you are able to predict the evolution of their mass as a function of time. And indeed, with the, this model, we were able to recover all the data. And not only we are able to recover the data, but you can predict uh, whether your bubble will be ever uh, long lasting or will collapse rapidly as a function of the relative humidity and the initial glycerol mass ratio. So to conclude, uh, I centered it on bubbles, but in fact, what we discover is a new material, a long lasting film, and you can uh, just create uh, some film. Uh, <clears throat> so here we have a metallic frame and we looked at the lifetime of a soap uh, film uh, as a function of time. And you see that after 39 seconds, uh, the film ruptures. When you add uh, particles, here it's particles and water. So the film ruptures after nine minutes. And if you don't have a clumsy um, PhD advisor as me that broke the experiments, uh, you could have very long living time of, uh, this, um, of this liquid film. Um, hopefully, we not only did on uh, one metallic frame, but we did a, a structure like this of liquid film uh, around a pyramidal uh, frame. And this is still uh, alive in our uh, laboratory. So <clears throat> to conclude, I would like to uh, underline this. This is really a teamwork and that uh, the person at the center of the study is uh, the student Emery Kru, who did uh, uh, most of the job. <clears throat> I would like also to thank uh, Physics of Fluid and APS Editorial Board for giving us the opportunity to, to, to discuss uh, this result here. And uh, I will end up with a teaser saying that if you liked our bubble, we are uh, working on some new amazing objects that we would like to present to you soon. And with that, I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Mika. And uh, on behalf of everybody, let me give you uh, applause uh, for this very beautiful uh, work. Uh, I'm sure there's many questions. Uh, I already see one uh, question coming in the chat, but uh, please uh, type your question in the chat or otherwise uh, take the liberty to raise your hand and, uh, and unmute. So let me read out. The first question from the chat, which is from uh, Terry uh, Bollinger. 
uh, and he asks, uh, in a microgravity environment such as the space station, is it possible that simple glycerol water bubble with no microparticle coatings would be everlasting? This is a very, very good question. In fact, uh, everyone asks us after the publication, is it the longest bubbles that have even been created? And uh, it's always difficult to say, uh, OK, uh, I have seen all the papers and so on, but we did our best. And we found uh, 1961, 69 papers of uh, Grosser in science where uh, he created some bubbles that uh, were so bubbles and that last for more than two years. But how did he succeed uh, that? He succeeded that because he did the experiment in a sealed flax where there were no dust, so the air was really filtered. Um, there were some liquid at the bottom of the flask to have a saturated atmosphere and prevent evaporation. He controlled uh, the vibration, and with that, he was able to keep uh, bubbles for a very long time. But even like that, since you have a, a, a bubble um, a shell, you have an overpressure uh, inside the bubble, and after some time, you have the, uh, the, um, the air inside the bubble that will diffuse outside. And what he observes is that the bubble were, uh, um, were shrinking. So <clears throat> um, the, 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 the limited factor at the end here, when you, you do all that, is that um, uh, the, the, the bubble still, uh, will still shrink. So now, if you think about experiments in microgravity, um, in microgravity, if you have, um, <clears throat> you will have no, uh, of course, no um, um, uh, drainage. So you will uh, limit the drainage. You can still have evaporation. So if you want to keep your bubble alive, you will need to saturate the, uh, the atmosphere. Um, and of course, um, if uh, there is no drainage and you limit evaporation, so in this case, indeed, you could keep the bubbles for uh, for a very uh, for a very long time. Okay, thank you very much. Um, then I have a question from uh, Aditya Jia, who thanks you for the talk and asks, what is the maximum size of the bubbles that you could achieve? Ah, uh, this is a very good question. So for that, uh, I will go back to uh, to this work. So in this work, um, they computed, uh, as I said, because you have the microparticle, because you have a curvature between of the meniscus between the particle, you have a negative pressure. <clears throat> and uh, what they showed uh, in this uh, paper is that when you um, <clears throat> bring some bubbles below uh, this uh, dome, um, <clears throat> you, if you increase too much uh, the, the height, then the uh, hydrostatic pressure will be higher than the negative pressure due to the capillary bond. So you will not be able to have too big uh, bubbles. So I think that with the process that we use, we are limited to a few centimeters for the fabrication of the bubble. But maybe with other processes, you could have uh, larger bubbles. OK, thank you. Then I will combine two questions from Stuart Williams and Antoine Rio. Uh, so Stuart asks, uh, can you comment on the impact of the particle size? And uh, Antoine asked about the monodispersity and sericity of the particles. So could you comment a bit on the on these aspects? So in our case, uh, we did not perform experiments with controlled particles, controlled size. So basically, we have uh, some uh, partic particles whose average size is 80 microns, but there is a lot of dispersion. In the work of, um, of uh, uh, Timoni and co-workers, they use very controlled uh, particle size. So what we observe uh, in our experiments is that if we change a bit the particle size, we do not change. Uh, we can still make the bubble and the, the process is not changed so much. And it was, um, it was um, discussed more carefully in this uh, um, control size bubbles. Um, uh, control size uh, particles. Uh, what I remember is that in the paper, they said that um, um, at the, uh, in, their, in their work, they had some particles that were still small compared, um, uh, they were in a certain regime, but you might have some change if you have particles that, 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 that uh, cross a limit in the size compared to uh, the, the, redu the reduce of your bubble. Okay, thank you. So, but it's a very robust uh, sort of phenomenon. You don't have to be very 
no, no we are not. Uh, we, we did it with uh, different types of, uh, uh, of of particles. It's quite uh, it's quite robust. Uh, but yeah, of yeah. course, uh, is the, the capillary bridge, the size of the capillary bridge, might depend on the size of your particles and so on. So it can it could limit the size of the bubbles that you can create and, uh, and so on. Okay, so then there's a question uh, from Jung uh, Ren Huang, and I, it ties in a bit with the question. Let me first ask the question that I had: uh, is that where do you keep this bubble that you want to keep for for a year? Uh, where where do you stock it, or how do you, uh, you know, uh, save it? And and the question that was in the chat was: are the results sensitive to vibrations or other disturbances? Okay, so uh, for the first question, uh, what we had to do is just to make a, um, a, a protection on uh, one side of our uh, laboratory because this is exactly what happened with uh, liquid film. Uh, we let it leave it on a, a microscope because we wanted to take some regular picture, and uh, unfortunately, I tried to do to move it and I broke the, the film by uh, uh, touching. So we just kept it in a, in a atmosphere, a normal atmosphere, but we uh, had. Uh, a box to protect uh, people from uh, uh, giving uh, so for just uh, touching them. So the second question, uh, can you remind me again? Um, so uh, vibrations, how how is, um... uh, vibration? Um, so the, the thing is, as you see, when we fabricate the bubble, uh, you can really manipulate uh, the bubble <clears throat> uh, like that. Uh, when they are created and you can um, manipulate them quite easily. Um, when we took the picture, we moved the bubble to took the picture every uh, three, three months, two months, three months, and so on. So um, we guess that they are quite robust uh, um, uh, for vibration. Uh, but at the same time, uh, of course, if you shake it too much, uh, it will uh, uh, eventually rupture. So it has a certain robustness, I think, to, uh, against vibration. Uh, uh, of course, we did not try uh, to, to vibrate them as much uh, um, to, 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 to look at their sensitivity depending on the vibration. OK, thank you. Um, so then I have a question. Um, uh, um, is, um, how, um, may I know how will the bubbles behave in an undersaturated or oversaturated environment? And how small can those bubbles be made? <clears throat> um, so um, the, the, the um, undersaturated, the oversaturated atmosphere. So again, uh, it's really a, an equilibrium uh, that we to reach um, here. It is so um, the 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 um, depending on the glycerol mass ratio and the ambient atmosphere, will you will have either the bubble will. Uh, increase uh, in uh, in uh, mass, so it will uh, capture some uh, some liquid uh, that is inside the atmosphere, and uh, or it will reject. So, if you had no water, of course, if you had no water in the atmosphere, um, then uh, you, you, your uh, your uh, your mass uh, will decrease. You will just uh, uh, have evaporation of your water that in, inside your droplet. So it's just an equation of equilibrium. This is what we show here. Uh, depending on the initial glycerol mass ratio and the relative humidity, uh, the bubble can live uh, forever or not. So of course, here in our laboratory, we had some variation of humidity, but that still remain uh, reasonable. So, so um, if you have large vari variations, then you will have some large fluctuation of the mass of the bubble. So okay, basically, as long as the liquid film has remain sick enough, then it doesn't break. So if if you have a very, very low amount of water outside and the liquid film, uh, the, the, the sickness decreases too much, then it will break. OK, thank you. Um, so uh, then another question uh, from Marcel Mora. Uh, can you have a permeability associated to the particle layer? Does it act like a porous medium so which in the inside air could uh, slow, uh, slowly flow out. Yes, it, it was shown in fact in, um, in a second paper by the group of, um, this is exactly what they studied. In this paper of Timone and coworkers, they looked when you increase the pressure inside the bubble, 
how much time does it take for the water uh, so for, for the air to uh, go outside um, um, uh, the bubble and what they showed is basically um, the, 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 it's, uh, the presence of the particles slow down the mechanism uh, but uh, the reason is just the the the, uh, the, surf the surface that the particle occupy of course uh, the the exchange depends on how much surface you have exchange surface and here because you have particles that occupy the part of the space then you have less surface so it will slow down uh, the mechanism okay thank you so um, the last question, I would like to give the floor to, to Terry, who I think wants to ask it uh, out loud because you have uh, shared your video. And um, so go ahead, Terry. Um, I was wondering whether the uh, lip lipid uh, bilayers of cells could be considered as examples of everlasting bubbles and whether that approach might inspire some uh, uh, different types of structures for everlasting bubbles in other domains. Yeah, this is a uh, <clears throat> this is a, a good question. Um, yeah, <clears throat> the, the the point here is that um, the, the particles um, um, the, 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 you you need to, you simply need uh, micro particles that are of, of, to to create this kind of bubbles. Micro particles that are partially wetting, and. Um, you have, I think, you have still a limiting size. Is that if the particles are too small, uh, this is in fact uh, the case of molecules like surfactants. Uh, then you will have a different dynamics because you will have, of course, uh, the, the, the movement uh, that is uh, um, induced. So um, yes, I guess we can probably decrease uh, the size of uh, our bubble and make uh, them smaller, and probably you can. Uh, uh, use different types of uh, materials and create uh, bubbles with many uh, different composition. One idea that we had was uh, to make some uh, some bubbles that you could eat by using uh, just uh, uh, um, uh, chocolate, uh, small small chocolate particles, and using uh, sugar instead of our um, glycerol. So yeah, I think this is something that, uh, that that is very interesting and that we have to look at is uh, uh, the, the the type of materials that can be used, the the, the, the size, the limiting size. Uh, uh, what is uh, what is uh, wh what are the objects that we can create with uh, uh, with this principle? <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. So there was two questions that I that were sort of on the same note. So let me ask them really to as a, as the final. Uh, question. So one question is how, was how can we find the surface energy of the bubble? And another question, which was on the rigidity. Can you comment on the rigidity of the bubble? So perhaps you could say mm -hmm. something about this to close uh, close the meeting. Yeah. So the, the rigidity is exactly what uh, was um, st st studied uh, in this paper. Um, the, 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 what they observe is when you increase the pressure uh, inside the bubble, uh, then, because of the capillary bridges, you have a strong uh, resistance of the bubble. And what what happens is um, when you increase uh, it's the graph here. In fact, when you you increase uh, the pressure, so you you can increase up to ten times Laplace pressure. And they did also experiments experiments with negative pressure. And what they observed is at some point you have a, a brutal decrease of um, of the the pressure. That comes from the fact that the particles are no more in contact, and then you get the, the classic elasticity of water um, with uh, soap. And they observe that uh, in this case, you um, do drop down to, in fact, uh, the cl classical elasticity of uh, a, a soap bubble. Um, so you have very, very, very strong uh, material uh, that is extremely resistant uh, to, uh, to uh, Laplace pressure. Um, and then uh, when you talk about surface energy, it's a complex problem because you have both uh, some particles uh, that, are, that have some surface energy, you have the liquids that have some surface energy. So if you want to discuss that, then you need to, uh, to really compute uh, the, the whole um, uh, mixed material to, to, to look at this uh, problem. Okay. Well, with that, I think I may have missed one or two questions from the chat still, but uh, thanks uh, everybody online for the uh, lively discussion. And of course, uh, Mika, for uh, your very beautiful talk, uh, very beautiful phenomenon that you have uh, 
have shown and uh, thanks for for giving this talk and then i would like to close this meeting uh, with that and hope to see you all soon in uh, real life